The chaos behind Donald Trump's policy of family separation at the border A 60 Minutes investigation has found the separations that dominated headlines this summer began earlier and were greater in number than the Trump administration admits this past week. A federal judge struck down the president's latest immigration order. It's been a chaotic two years on the border as the administration imposed barriers with little consideration of their legality or consequences. The 2017 ban on travelers from Muslim countries was so abrupt it surprised the officers who had to enforce it. Before the midterm elections, President Trump ordered thousands of troops to Texas to stop what he called an assault by a caravan of Central Americans. That caravan is now at the border of California. But the most tumultuous order of all, was this summer's separation of children from their parents, which Mr. Trump had to quickly withdraw. Our investigation has found that the separation of families began far earlier and detained many more children than the administration has admitted. This is a Department of Homeland Security arrest warrant issued during the child separations last spring. The target of the arrest is a three-year-old named Immers. Scott Pelley, tell me about the moment that Immers was taken away from you. His father, Ever, told us, I never thought that they would separate him from me. But an immigration agent said, you're going to be separated, your son is going to be taken away and then a judge will decide what will be done with you. Immers and his father crossed the border illegally but presented themselves to the border patrol and requested asylum. Ever, the father, says he was shot in the back in Honduras, a country at war with gangs and drug cartels. As asylum applicants, they're permitted by law to stay until their hearing, usually in two or three months. Before, most asylum seekers were released at that point. But under the Trump administration they were arrested and charged with a crime. Because children can't be incarcerated, Immers was sent to a foster family in Michigan. I don't know what part of your soul has to be missing to say, we'll take an infant from its mother with no provision about how they will ever get back together again. Scott Shackhart, if you're going to separate families in the pursuit of an immigration policy, it was irresponsible to push that on top of a system that wasn't prepared on the back end to allow the families to be reconciled later. Scott Shackard was surprised by the new policy even though he worked at Homeland Security Headquarters at the Office of Civil Rights and Civil Liberties. He told us the order was so abrupt it bypassed the usual review. Scott Pelly, if they had come to you, what would your office have said? Scott Shackard. We would have had advice on the way that needed to be done, on the record keeping that needed to be done. And our advice on that wasn't sought out. And when we tried to provide it, it was ignored. Scott Pelley, what do you mean by record keeping? Scott Shackhart, making sure that we knew where everybody was at all times so that they could be put into contact and reunited later. People were removed to other countries without there being good records of what adult went with what child. That's what we found in this Homeland Security internal investigation. It says one border station made no effort to identify and reunite families prior to their removal from the United States. The DHS Inspector General says the agency was not fully prepared and struggled to provide accurate, complete reliable data on family separations. The report found that incompatible computer systems erased data that connected children with their families. Cecilia Munoz, I don't know what part of your soul has to be missing to say, we'll take an infant from its mother with no provision about how they will ever get back together again. They might never see each other again. Cecilia Munoz handled immigration in the Obama administration as the director of the Domestic Policy Council. She says that even though apprehensions at the border have been trending down for a decade, many administrations struggle with the patchwork of U.S. laws that require border security and protection of asylum seekers. Scott Pelley, you know better than most that there are people watching this interview who are saying, they shouldn't have come. Cecilia Munoz we have a broken immigration system. I've been working on this in this policy area for 30 years. I'll be the first to say we have a broken immigration system. The question is what we do about that. We lack the political will to fix it.
and we will continue to create crises, crises of our own making, until we fix it. And some of all that's on us. We live in a democracy. We all know everybody who dash no matter how you feel about immigrants, including the people who don't like immigrants, we all agree this thing is broken. Scott Pelley, when the Trump administration made the decision to separate children from families, what responsibilities did they take on, in your estimation? Cecilia Munoz, they issued an order without consulting with the agencies who were responsible for carrying out that order. We take better care of people's effects when we send them to jail than we took care of the children who we took from their parents. And that's because these decisions were clearly made at the top and pushed down to the agencies without thinking through the ramifications and without thinking through the potential harm.